one pastor was trying to get to United States from from Europe it was during the time that they did not have airplanes and so he got his ticket on the voyage on the ship spent all of his savings to get the money to get the ticket to come to the United States but he didn't have the money to eat in those fancy restaurants that the ship had so what he did instead of eating in the fancy restaurants he got a big bag and saved himself some cheese and crackers for 21 days this trip would last so the first day he got there you know he kept his hope alive that you know he's moving to the United States he was coming from persecuted country and uh, first day he came out on the board eating his cheese and crackers second day he's eating cheese and crackers third day he's eating cheese and crackers on the 20th day after eating cheese and crackers one of the guys comes to him and says hey no mean to offend you sir but I've noticed that every single day when we go to the buffet you go into the side and you stick your head into your bag what is that that you do and he felt really embarrassed he said I'm very poor and I don't have money to afford all of these fancy restaurants so I could only save up money to buy the ticket and so you know all of you giggling over there and laughing as you're devouring your fancy food I'm actually enjoying my cheese and crackers and I cannot wait to get to the States so that this torture of cheese and crackers will come to an end the man looked at him and he says you gotta be kidding me did you not know that all the buffets and all the restaurants were included in your ticket I wonder sometimes how many times we as Christians live on cheese and crackers not realizing of stuff that's already included in their ticket and we're just waiting for the sweet by and by for Jesus to come and sweep us and finish all the problems and wait for all of the promises of God to be fulfilled out there when we die so many people look to death for their deliverance instead of Christ when I die this one I'll be free when I die this is when things will end you know Jesus Christ doesn't want death to be your deliverer he wants himself to be your deliverer I want, I want you to rise to your feet we're going to open the scripture together to book of Acts chapter 3 verse 2 and verse 3 book of Acts chapter 3 verse 2 and verse 3 and if you're there say amen if you're still opening your app and your app is not loading say wait for me book of Acts chapter 3 verse 2 and verse uh, 3 as you're opening your Bible I want to remind you that if you use you how many of you use you version Bible app all right so many of you I actually have two Bible reading plans there one is for single ready to mingle five days and one is break free for 14 days you can read with your friends so while you're there you can subscribe to one uh, if you're there say amen. amen if you're not there yet we can't wait anymore <laughs> Acts chapter 3 verse 2 and a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried somebody say carried, carried. whom I love how you guys say it I think it's so funny for you guys to listen to my accent probably huh no they have a big accent okay I do I have like Ukrainian mixed with American half of the time I'm not even sure what I am but um, the way you guys have it is just beautiful a certain lame man was from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms and if we flip the next to the next chapter chapter 4 if you go to your phone chapter 4 verse 4 it says the following so after this miracle that he gets freed and he starts dancing and goes into the temple praising God it says however many of those who heard the word believed and the number of men came to be 5,000 Holy Spirit we welcome you we thank you for your presence we thank you for your word and I pray that you will help me to digest your word today I pray that you will open our ears to understand our hearts to understand our ears to hear and anoint my mouth to speak father I pray that every young person here today God who doesn't know you will come to know you I pray that the sick will be healed I pray people that are oppressed will be delivered and father I pray that you will baptize us afresh with your Holy Spirit I pray that you will kindle us kindle within us a flame for the calling that you have placed on upon our lives Lord we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus and everybody said amen you may take your seats in the presence of Jesus I want to speak today for just a moment about walking in the Holy Spirit walking in the Holy Spirit 
I understand that many of us here today are Pentecostals and uh, praise to God. I'm born Pentecostal, raised Pentecostal and gonna die Pentecostal. In the church we have a problem today because the church has created a new trinity. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Scriptures. All around the Western world there has been a third God that's been created. God the Holy Scriptures. With the Holy Scriptures which I value so dearly, their God breathed, have replaced and pushed aside the Holy Spirit. I wrote the book too but I can tell you one thing. The author is always bigger than the book. The Holy Ghost who wrote the Bible is greater than the Bible. The Holy Ghost is God and I believe that He is the most forgotten God on the earth today. Most people treat the Holy Spirit the same way Pharisees treated Jesus. They love the God of Abraham and hated God the Son. They didn't understand Him. He was weird. He was crazy. He didn't fit into their mold. And so many people have the same view of the Holy Spirit. They think He is weird. Just because they met some Pentecostals that are weird. I'm going to tell you one thing. Holy Spirit is anything but weird. He's wild but He's not weird. Holy Spirit is the most normal person that you will ever meet in your life. And Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is God but He's also a person. So the story we read today is this. The Bible says is there was a man and he was lame from the birth. Being lame from birth did not mean that this man did not have legs. It just meant that this man's legs did not carry him. He carried them. The Bible doesn't say that he didn't have legs. The Bible just says that his legs didn't work. Are you with me? Okay. When you were born, when I was born, the legs came as part of the package on the day of birth. Yes or no? How many of you know that you didn't get your legs as an upgrade five years down the road? How many of you know you didn't get your legs as an update because you were obedient and you finally, you know, learned to sleep on the right time and everything and then God just brought the legs by UPS and they attached them to you six years down? No, you were born with your legs. Everybody born with their legs, give God some praise. All right, all right. And some of you, you're like, I'm glad, I'll be honest, I'm not sure. I know I was there, I just don't remember if I came out with my legs or not. Let me assure you to you, on the day of your birth, the Creator gave you legs. But how many of you know, just because you were born with legs, it doesn't mean you walked out of your mother's womb. Having legs is one thing which came at your birth. Learning to use them took some time. Getting them at your birth was a gift. But walking in the legs you got at your birth came with exercise. Came with your parents helping you to walk, correct? It came with falling and getting up. Walking with the legs you can't, you got as a gift. It took some patience. It took somebody to hold you. Somebody to pick you up. Someone said, come, come, come. Come on, come on, come on. You got, ah, you took one step. Great. You just failed on the second one, but you're still awesome. We'll do it again next time. It took some patience. It took some trial and error. It took some time. I'm getting that. I'm getting somewhere. When you got born again, God gave you the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit did not come when you started to speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit came when you became saved. God immediately gave you the Holy Spirit. He didn't wait. He didn't give you probation. He didn't give you like a six month period to say, I'll see if you're serious. I'll see if you backslide. God at that moment that you got saved, God didn't just give you a new heart. God did not just write your name in the Lamb's book of life. God did not just clean your record, wipe clean. God gave the Holy Spirit to live inside of you at that very moment. That is a very precious gift. That is an amazing gift. But see the Holy Spirit is like legs. You get them at birth. But most people are just like this lame man, still don't use them. They got them, except those legs don't carry them, they carry the legs.
legs. The Bible says the man had legs but he was lame in the sense that they didn't carry him. He dragged them with him to the temple. I want to speak today to people who have the Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit doesn't have you. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit doesn't have every Christian. This man had legs. <laughs> they just didn't work. He just didn't walk with them. He crawled. He dragged them to church. And in fact the scripture says, where was this man seated? Where? At the gate? He wasn't inside. He was at the gate. When you have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Ghost doesn't have you, your body will be sitting in the church pew. Your mind will always be checked out. Sermons are always going to be boring. Worship is always going to be something that is just not your favorite song. Not your favorite tune. I just don't feel it today. The spirit is not here. No, it's just your mind is not here. The spirit is here. It's just the spirit, your spirit is not there. Why? Because when you got legs but they don't carry you, you always stay at the gate. The Bible says he was laid at the gate. He didn't stand there and clap and worship God. He was laying at the gate. See, lame Christians are laying Christians. They're not walking with God. They're not dancing and praising and worshiping God and walking with the Holy Spirit. They're usually, their Christian life could be summed in one word, laying. And the Bible says that he was laying there at the gate. But I want you to notice another thing. He wasn't saying, when people were walking in, he said, hey, high five, welcome to the temple. You're going to have a fabulous day. He was there saying, could you give me a coin or two? He was begging. He had the legs. He was begging. When he started to walk, the Bible says he enters into the temple, no longer at the gate. He's not begging in the temple though his financial situation is still the same. He didn't get a million dollar check. He didn't win a lottery. Nothing changed in his finances. Something happened. When he started to walk in the legs that he got, something changed in him. He gets inside of the temple and inside of the temple he doesn't walk around and say, hey guys can you can you go to my GoFund account and donate five dollars to improve my financial situation. The Bible says he was praising God. He was at the gate, he was laying, and he was begging because he was lame. There's a lot of Christians that are lame Christians. Lame Christians in the sense that they got the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost hasn't gotten them. They live their Christian life crawling. And they're like, man, the Holy Spirit created the universe. He can't even carry my algebra and geometry. The Holy Spirit made the heavens and the earth but he can't even carry my heart. I have to carry the Holy Spirit as a doctrinal disposition. I believe in him. I know I got him but he is doing absolutely nothing in my life. My whole life is carried by my own strength and my own abilities. My own efforts and my own work. My own pressure and everything that I put in is what I get out. There's nothing the Holy Spirit does. I don't feel and I don't see His activity. And you can get to the point where you start even doubting whether you have the Holy Spirit or not. My friend, if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. But today I am on assignment to come into your life like Peter and John and not to give you legs, but to help you work them. To help you Get your hand up and say, listen, the legs that you brought in can carry you. The Holy Ghost was not sent so you carry the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was sent that you, He carries you. That He carries your education. That He carries your finances. That the Holy Spirit, He carries your ministry. That the Holy Spirit carries your relationship. That the Holy Spirit carries your family. That He carries the burden. That He has the power to carry the weight of your life. If He created the universe, He can carry your life. But my friends, it's not that we don't have Him. 
it's that he doesn't have us and you may say what is the difference the difference is in this we get the Holy Spirit by salvation he gets us by surrender write that down that, that's tweetable right there we get the Holy Spirit by salvation Holy Spirit gets us by surrender many of us we got the Holy Spirit the same way we got legs we're grown up babies and our pastor is pushing a stroller every Sunday we're grown up babies and our mentor our small group leader what pretty much they're doing is they're just helping us on the wheelchair of rules on the wheelchair of different advices to push us into church instead of us walking to church on our own instead of us being motivated to go to church on our own instead of us being initiators to serve in our church instead of us coming in and being engaged and not just coming and say i'm not being fed but realizing is that the only kids who say i'm not being fed are toddlers if you're an adult child you live with your parents and you come to your mama and your daddy say mom and dad i'm not getting fed you know what they will say there is food in the fridge and if you're not getting fed that means you're not hungry see when you have the holy spirit you don't have to wait for pastor's revelation you don't have to wait for the right tune you don't have to wait for none of that you got your own eggs and they carry you and you could use them you don't have to wait for somebody to bring you into the gates you don't have to wait for somebody to toss you a coin why because you got your own legs and you can walk with the holy ghost i'm gonna preach to myself it's completely fine so i'm gonna share with you just practically three things on how to walk in the holy spirit somebody say amen i want you to write this down the first thing i want you to write this down to walk in the spirit i have to talk to the spirit 25 minutes thank you buddy to walk in the spirit i have to talk to the spirit to the spirit somebody say talk to the spirit so to walk i have to talk now in order to talk to the spirit we have to understand we have to break few misconceptions one is the holy spirit is not tongues a baramazda sharabarahanda is not the holy ghost that's a gift of the holy spirit the holy spirit is a person the holy spirit is not pentecostal the holy spirit is god the holy spirit has feelings the holy spirit has a will and the holy spirit has emotions he is a person he's not a dove he's not a fire he's not an oil he's not a shaking and baking he's not a fat tickling in my stomach right there he is not none of that now that could be a manifestation of his power but who he is is a person somebody say amen the Holy Spirit is not a flame. Holy Spirit is not a feeling. You don't feel Holy Spirit. You know Holy Spirit because He's a person. You feel His power but you know Him as a person. The Bible says be still and know the Lord is God. The Bible doesn't say be still and feel the Lord is God. I don't feel my wife. I know my wife. You can feel the Spirit. You can know the Spirit because He is a person. But you can feel His power. Come on somebody so to talk to the Holy Spirit I must break a mental stronghold and Holy Spirit is oh, ah. now that's great but the Holy Spirit is more than that he is a person tongues is a gift like I had a buddy of mine he gifted me with this iPad I get my mind away he gave me this iPad but that's a gift I use every day my friend is not the iPad I had a buddy of mine that got saved u.s marine and he came to church came to church and i just moved into my new house and he bought me a nice tv and he's a pastor lad i haven't been tithing for so many years and that's my tithe i was like i don't think that's how this works i don't think you buy a pastor a tv and that's your tithe but i'm like i'll keep the tv while you figure out the theology <laughs> i'm like if you want to buy anything else while you're still in your little fog of ignorance <laughs> feel free to do that good lord understands your heart <laughs> this friend of mine who bought the tv four years ago lives somewhere in hawaii i have not talked to him in three years tried to reach out on facebook he doesn't respond he's still there i see his facebook post he just doesn't respond back to me the crazy part is i still have the tv see you can speak in tongues till you turn blue and never know the holy ghost 
you can use the gift and not develop a personal relationship with the person and my friend did not take the TV back just because he moved to Hawaii Holy Ghost is not going to take the gift of tongues or other gifts just because you ignore and reject them and you will come to church and the anointing will be present and you will go and live in sin and you will like Holy Ghost is with me the gift is with you but the intimacy is not there I'm not saying you don't have a relationship I'm saying you don't have intimacy just because you're using TV it doesn't mean you're in contact with the person who gave it to you that's why a, a soul would come into the group of prophets laid on the floor and experience manifestations and prophesy until he turned ripped all of his clothes and got up and went back to his old ways why because you can experience the Holy Ghost in the presence where all of us are experiencing it but it doesn't mean you have the intimacy with him what I'm talking today is to walk in the Holy Ghost but to walk in the Holy Ghost you gotta talk to the Holy Ghost now the Bible makes me to understand that I don't pray to the Holy Spirit we pray to the Father we don't pray to Jesus we pray to the Father in Jesus name we don't pray to Mary we don't pray to saints and we don't pray to the Holy Ghost we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus by the help of the Holy Ghost is anybody with me but the scripture says in Corinthians that may the love of the God, may, may love of the Father, the grace of Jesus and the fellowship, somebody say fellowship, somebody shout fellowship. fellowship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. It's not a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it's fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That means Holy Ghost wants to fellowship. That's not prayer. That's not Holy Ghost barking orders and says turn right, turn left, stop. Don't date him, don't like her, don't watch this, don't do this. That's not fellowship, that's barking orders. When I fellowship with my wife, I don't ask nothing in particular. We're just talking. We're just sharing our feelings. We're just sharing what's on our mind. And the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you always. That means Holy Ghost is a person and he wants to talk to you and he wants you to talk to him every single day. I'm not talking about prayer. I'm talking about communion. I don't pray to my wife every day and say, Thou was the fairest of thousand, lily of the valleys. Thine body is like a Coca-Cola and I worship thee. I don't do that stuff. Why? Because that's called idolatry. <laughs> I know it's sexy and I know it's cool but it's called idolatry. What I do is as I talk to my wife, I don't worship my wife and so the Holy Spirit is my friend. That's why I fellowship. He is my friend. He's not a force I feel. He's a friend I talk with. If you want to walk in the Holy Spirit, this is how it starts. I'm going to get it very practical. Talk to Him. You're driving, in, stuck in the elevator, somewhere in the metro, somewhere in the bathroom, in the shower. Like this morning because of a time zone, you know, woke up at 3 o'clock from 3 to 6 and I didn't pray. I just talked to my friend who's been there in the living room all that time waiting for me to wake up. And tears would roll down my eyes because I, it, his presence would fill the room. I didn't do anything very special, super spiritual. It's turned on my favorite Holy Spirit songs. I said, Holy Spirit, I love you, Holy Spirit. I miss you. If I've done anything in the last few days, I probably have. I'm really, really sorry. I just want to be with you. I'm not here to milk a sermon out of you. I'm not here so you can give me anointing. I'm here because you're my friend. What are friends for? In order to walk, you have to talk. See, sometimes it's harder to speak to the Holy Spirit because see, when we think of the Father, we think of like a, like, like a dad. You know, and if you had a good dad, it's easier for you. You're thinking of a, a, a gray man, little belly, kind. You feel safe in his arms. When you think of Jesus, you think of Jim Gaviezel in the Passion of the Christ. Tall, handsome, strong. And then when you think of the Holy Ghost, the mind goes blank fire wind oil shaking and baking tongues like which one do i choose today <laughs> and i remember one time i said lord if you wanted me to fellowship with the holy spirit why didn't you give the holy ghost a body 
I mean, I know that you've chosen to identify like a father, Jesus, like a Jewish man, the Messiah. Why didn't you give the Holy Ghost? You keep appearing him like dove and wind. I'm like, it's confusing to talk to a wind. And I feel the Holy Spirit spoke back to me and he said, Jesus chose the, the male Jewish body, but the Holy Ghost chose your body. He's no less a person just because you don't see him physically. If you want to see the Holy Ghost, look in the mirror. Your body is his house. Your body is his address. Your body is his location. That's why your body has value. That's why you can sell yourself cheap. That's why you can cut your body. That's why you can ink your body. Why? It's not your body. It's his house. You have to always ask the owner's permission. That's why you can't put drugs in your body. That's why you can't put liquor in your body. That's why you can't put a man inside of your body or other things in your body. Why? You got to ask the owner. Who is the owner? The Holy Ghost. And you and him happen to be on very good terms. Somebody give God some praise right now. Come on, somebody give God some praise right now. The Holy Ghost owns you and me. In order to have in order to walk with the Holy Ghost we need to talk to the Holy Ghost I'm telling you one thing when you start talking to the Holy Spirit you don't have to be a preacher you don't have to be a, a minister you don't have to be a worship leader you can be maybe you consider yourself an average Joe a stay-at-home mom or maybe you're a single mom or maybe today you're just a college student and you barely have time for prayer I'm telling you one thing begin to talk to the Holy Ghost he's already there he's waiting he wants to talk back to you I'm not talking about to give you only things to do he wants to just talk he is a friend not a force my God but the second thing I want you to notice is not only we have to talk to him if we want to walk in him walking in the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you it makes me better than me write that down tweet that too walking in the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you it only makes me better than me in Galatians it says the following I say then walk in the spirit in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh and then if you read later on in 22 and verse 23 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is no law I want you to see this is that when I walk in the Holy Spirit it happens because I talk to the Holy Spirit but the benefit of walking and talking in the Holy Spirit not only I begin to he begins to guide me but what begins to happen is the Bible says that as I, as I walk in the Holy Spirit I don't fulfill somebody say fulfill the Bible doesn't say you won't have watch this the Bible does not say if you walk in the Holy Spirit you will not have lust of the flesh it says you will not fulfill lusts of the flesh lust will still be there lust is like a an itch athlete's foot you know like when it just itches and then you want to scratch it thinking it's going to go away and the more you scratch it the more it itches that's exactly what lust is if you give into it it promises it will go away but in reality it only increases that's what lust does and the bible doesn't say that if i walk in the holy spirit that the itch goes away it's that i have the power not to scratch Touch your neighbor and say, don't scratch it. The guy that's writing to you, don't scratch back. Don't respond back. Don't scratch it. God will give you the power not to scratch it. But I want you to see this in Galatians chapter 5. It says the fruit of the Spirit. Somebody say fruit. It doesn't say the work. The works is applied to the work of flesh. Meaning I work, I tail, I, I, I strive. It says the fruit, meaning I surrender. If you ever seen how fruits are produced, you never see the tree going, mm -hmm. Oh Jesus, hallelujah. Apple is out, thank you Lord. Next day. Oh, oh. Orange is out. Fruits are not produced like work. Fruit happens naturally fruit happens slowly and fruit grows 
fruit is first sour before it's sweet I always and when I feel like I am impatient I don't walk around and say I am impatient I say that my patience is sour but that means it's getting sweet because it's a fruit and fruit don't just appear as gifts fruits are grown with time but the best part about fruits I want you to see this the difference between the fruit and the gift two apples <laughs> this is a gift this is the fruit this grows on trees naturally and this has to be produced by people in China and sold in America for a very very heavy price this is the fruit I want you to notice a big difference one is this one you wear it this one you eat it when you walk with the Holy Spirit I'm gonna tell you one thing about your life your character will be affected by the Holy Spirit the world tells us work on your character nowhere do you see an apple is working on the apple the apple is a result of a branch abiding on the tree Christianity love kindness long-suffering all of these things are not because you work on them they happen because you work on your relationship and the fruit comes automatically you work on your intimacy and the issues get resolved automatically I want to give you a freedom today stop working on your problems and your character issues stop it look in the last five years how much did you get by working on it you're still in the same problem you're still angry you're still impatient you're still looking at the stuff you should not be looking and so can I give you try something for the rest of this year stop working on your character work on your intimacy and something will happen your character slowly but surely will begin to change and you will never be able to say oh because I worked on it you will say it was the fruit of the Spirit I didn't work on it he worked on it because I focused on intimacy and I don't get the credit it's not fruit of Vlad it's not fruit of my mama it's not fruit of my fasting it's not fruit of my prayer it's the fruit of the Spirit the only thing I did is I developed intimacy with him and he produced it slowly but surely somebody give God some praise right now but the best part about the fruit watch this the best part about the fruit if you have it people around you will be this is awesome. if you marry somebody who has a fruit of the Spirit they'll feed you if your parents if you're in a house your parents will be fed by you if you don't have it they'll be fed up by you with the fruit I feed my spouse see my wife doesn't care if I can speak in tongues she just cares how I speak to her in English my wife doesn't care how many people fall if I lay my hands on her what she cares is do I touch her gently my wife is fed when I have a fruit not the gifts of the Holy Ghost she doesn't care how many applause I get in a sermon and how many views my sermons get on YouTube she gets fed by my character you get blessed by the gift but the people around me are fed by my character that's why some men don't have good families and don't have good relationships why because they only have an apple watch but not an apple fruit mm. ladies don't look for a man who has a new apple watch make sure the home slides has some apples gentlemen don't look for a lady just because she's fine make sure her fruits are there because you're not just going to be sleeping with her body you're going to be living with her character and if that girl has no apples listen you're going to be eating of that and this is what you're going to say after six months of marriage you're gonna say I am fed up by you why because it's only the fruit of the Spirit that will make you say 
I am fed by you. Mic drop right there. I just feel the anointing is being released as I eat this. <laughs> this is very good apple. Not big, but sweet. That's what the fruit of the Spirit is. It feeds your family. You go to work, your employees, they're fed by you. If, if you keep hearing this about yourself, that people are fed up with you, stop working on your issues. You won't get it better. It will be work of the flesh. Work on your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you will start seeing small little things appear. And you will never be able to take the credit for it. You will say it's the fruit of the Spirit. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. How does this happen? Sorry. I have to speak so I need to finish eating faster. How does this happen practically, Pastor Vlad? I'll, I'll demonstrate it to you. Can I have two people? One from this and one more. Uh, give me a lady, a, a guy. And give me a girl. Uh, somebody quickly come up to the stage. Quickly, quickly. The girl one will have it easy. Come on, let's go, let's go, come. Do you have... Is your cup still full? Is your cup of coffee still full? Bring, bring it here. Well, actually, you know, it's, it's fine. It's fine. This one's, this one's going to be fine. This one's fine. Come on. Come on over. What's your name? Uh, David. David. Hold this. What is your name, ma'am? Abisoya. Abisoya. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to do this. As quickly as you can. I want you to run down all around and come back here and quickly now you have water there so quickly as all the way do not do not spill anything so one two three go don't spill it don't spill it <clears throat> don't spill it Have you noticed two differences? Have you noticed when David ran, he didn't look at you, he looked at his cup. When she ran, she just looked at everybody. You know why? Because her cup is empty. His cup is full. You know that she came first. Why? Because she had nothing to protect. He came last. Because it wasn't about coming first. It was about not spilling anything he got. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't care about who comes first. Your main priority, make sure you don't spill the Holy Ghost. Make sure you don't spill that peace. Make sure you don't spill that anointing. Make sure you don't spill that glory. Why? Because you know it's a treasure in the earthly vessels. This is how it works. See, many of you are forcing yourself to look at God. Think about God as you go about your day. When in reality you're empty and every five minutes you get distracted. You're like, man, why can I stay focused on God? You will always be focused on that with what you're filled with automatically. Don't try to be focused on God. Be filled with Him and your focus will follow. What happens here? One of my principles, those of you who follow me on Instagram, you see, I never put lids on my coffee. Never do that. I spill sometimes in my car and myself for this reason to me it's a constant reminder if I am full of the Holy Spirit I become conscious of the Holy Spirit and I change how I live I slow things down I watch my mouth I can't why not because I'm a good person because I'm a filled person 
so my goal is not to become a better person my goal is to become better with the Holy Spirit and automatically somehow some way I can't explain it somehow some way my attitude goes in check my anger goes in check my patience go in, goes in check the way I treat my enemies goes in check what I watch on the TV or on the computer goes in check I don't have to work on it because it's the work of the flesh I just surrender and yield because when you're filled with him you become conscious of him and it changes the way you live the way you behave and the way you relate to other people because somebody say amen now please finish it I'm just kidding you don't have to thank you so much guys thank you so much you can put it back yeah can somebody say amen, amen. that your neighbor said don't work on your issues that your other neighbor say work on your intimacy and lastly so the first thing we mentioned if you talk to the Holy Spirit you will walk in the Holy Spirit if you work on the intimacy your issues will be resolved and Holy Spirit will not make you better than other people he will just make you better than you and it will not happen because you're so disciplined and trust me I believe in discipline I believe in prayer and fasting I believe in setting up controls on your computer I believe in deleting apps I believe in removing the trigger points all of that but I believe none of that is powerful enough against the forces of flesh and the demons there is a power that's greater than any power it's the power of the Holy Spirit D.L. Moody talked talk to his students and he said how do you remove air out of the glass and they had different you know reasons so vacuum it blow it out he says there's only one way to remove air out of the glass fill it with water you want to remove issues fill it with something else that's why I don't work on you you may say but, but I, I have to fix them if I don't nothing will change you've been working on those things for the last five years honey nothing is gonna change now your new year's resolution look how long did that last it's not you're not gonna make it by your resolutions you're gonna only make it by your relationship and your intimacy fruit of the spirit it will feed others people will be so pleasant around you people will hire you people will promote you people will be delighted people would pray that their children get married to you why because you will feed people lastly I want you to notice that when this man got healed when this man got healed he started to walk he went into the temple he started to praise God he worshiped God and the Bible says the 5,000 men got saved because of that if you're taking notes I want you to write this down you were given legs not to sit in church but to walk in your calling to win your generation you don't need legs if you're not planning to go anywhere you don't need legs if you're planning to sit on your blessed assurance Jesus is mine and do absolutely nothing the Bible says because of this miracle because his legs started to walk 5,000 men committed their life to God I'm not sure if he didn't even preach he was just there dancing and shouting people people were you know kind of asking probably questions but Peter used that opportunity led many people to Jesus I believe walking with Holy Spirit has to lead every person here to win souls for Jesus Jesus said follow me and I will make you famous on Instagram follow me and I will help you to lose weight Jesus said follow me and I'll help you to climb the corporate ladder of success you will have an amazing job wonderful children they always will be healthy you will have a high paying job drive a really nice car and you'll retire very luxuriously if you follow me that's not what the Bible says I believe the first sign that you're truly following Jesus is Jesus says I will make you what what not famous rich preachers or singers or release albums or books those things have their place but they're not the goal they're the byproduct he says you will become fishers of men Jesus says in, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 he says and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will become tongue speaking Pentecostals that's not what my Bible says my Bible says that if you receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will become what witnesses that means that the walking in the Holy Spirit is not so that I can have miracles it's so that I can see people come to know Jesus the miracles are the sign to salvation miracles are the sign to lead them to salvation we went today to that what is that thing called I yeah the coca-cola thing 
and so we were trying to get to that and there were different signs guiding to the to that thing and so I didn't hug the sign I didn't go in like oh my gosh I got the sign no I looked at the sign because the sign was pointing further and until I got into that little little thing and saw the whole London this was the goal you must understand every miracle every breakthrough your blessing is a sign to your generation for them to meet Jesus most of us have become the destination when in reality we're supposed to be a sign this man's miracle was just a sign that man will meet Jesus and get saved Esther becoming a queen becoming beautiful and winning the beauty pageant was just a sign so to save a generation Moses being saved from Egypt's death by not eating crocodiles was just a sign so he can be used to save a generation God saved Paul so that he can use him to save a generation I believe you were delivered you were healed you were saved so that you can bring your generation to Jesus Christ God wants you to prosper God wants you to be rich God wants you to be healthy God wants you to climb the corporate ladder of success God wants you to graduate with honors God wants you to write books write music create blogs and have millions of people that will follow you but all of that is so that many people will come to know Jesus Christ <clears throat> our generation today is obsessed with inspiration I just want to live to inspire all the girls in the world to reach their fullest potential. That is awesome. If hell is not real, devil is not real, and eternity doesn't exist. Living to inspire your generation is the best goal you can live for. If hell is not real, if cross did not happen, if Jesus did not die, and heaven doesn't exist. That is an amazing goal. Kudos to you. But hell is hot forever is very long Jesus is the only way to salvation you cannot live your life to inspire you have to live your life to save you have to live your life to bring your generation to Jesus Christ somebody give God some praise right now <laughs> Esther Mordecai comes to Esther and says Esther your generation is dying you need to do something about it and Esther says well you know I got this Instagram account Esther she was like the the Kardashian except with clothes on <coughs> sorry just something got stuck in my throat <coughs> very famous very beautiful at the time she was the every girl's dream everybody looked at her and Esther says oh my gosh she was an orphan and she was Jewish girl and look at her I just want to be like Esther just want to be like Esther and Esther had her little blog she had her little thing going on and Mordecai comes in and he says I want you to do something radical I want you to go and save your generation and Esther says but I, I'm here to inspire I just want to help little people to know that they're not what they look and they just they're not what they eat they are what God says they are Mordecai slapped that out of her and he says listen girl if you're not gonna save these people God's gonna find somebody else he says God made you famous God made you good looking not because you got good genes God made you good looking and God made you famous is because he had a purpose your platform has a purpose Esther wake up you were called for such a time as this you were raised up for such a time as this you're not good looking because you're good looking because God has a purpose for your platform you're not just educated because your mama and daddy put you through college God has a purpose for your platform you're not just gifted speaker and a singer because you have vocals and because you're able to connect God has a purpose for your platform and we walk in the Holy Ghost to go to our purpose and our assignment please understand my friends I know some of you may say but you know Vlad you don't understand my purpose on this earth is just to help everybody to discover their true potential sunshine people are going to hell I just want to bring wholeness you know there's going to be a lot of healthy people in hell 
a lot of rich people in hell our goal is not just to help people become rich and healthy that is has its place but at the end we all gonna die 60 70 80 and we're gonna face judgment and therefore our assignment on this life is not just to help a blind man to give him a sandwich as he's walking to a cliff is to help a blind man get off from the cliff I'm all for giving sandwiches to blind people but not if they're headed to the cliff I'm all for helping our generation to discover their truest selves and reach their dreams but if a person's heartbeat stops and they're going to hell I did them this service the Holy Ghost comes upon me not to make me into a preacher a singer but to make me into a missionary into a witness and into somebody who wins people to Jesus whether you work in business, whether you work in school, whether you walk in the hospital, whether you work right now, just simply maybe having a minimum paid job. Your job is your platform. You don't have to have a microphone to lead somebody to Jesus. You just have to have influence. And influence comes when you care for people. When you're compassionate for people. When you care for their souls, not for their opinions. Okay, influence comes when you begin to walk with the Holy Ghost. And something happens. God gives you an opportunity to share your faith. God gives you opportunity to bring somebody to church. To bring somebody to Christ. And even though you never reached your dreams, you reached your calling. We have a generation that's drunk on reaching their dreams. Please understand my friends, that's not in the gospel. You have to reach your calling and your calling is to win souls and make disciples. Whether you're going to be a mayor of London or you're going to be a janitor for the mayor, your calling is to win souls and make disciples. Your career, you decide that. Your calling, you discover that your career is temporary your calling is eternal your career it will change throughout seasons opportunities economy but your calling never changes whether you're in a parliament or you're in a homeless shelter your calling remains the same your career gives you money your calling gives you eternal significance your career requires education and connections your calling requires the holy ghost and anointing we are all called, each one of us, myself included, not to write books for the sake of writing books so people meet Jesus. Not to just preach so we can entertain the crowd or even feed the crowd so the people meet Jesus. Our churches exist not so the 10 other churches in town will close down because our church grew. Our church is to plunder hell and populate heaven. Most of what church growth is today is this. My church grew and 10 other churches shut down. If I moved money from my pocket to my wallet, I didn't get richer. If we move church people from one church to another, the kingdom of God doesn't grow. A pastor's ego grows. He writes a book on how to grow the church. While 10 other pastors are seeing a, a psychiatrist because they want to end their life. That's not growth, my friend. Growth is when hell has a headache. Growth is when devil runs nervous. Growth is when you pluck young people from the gates of hell. Growth is when demons running rampant. Why? Because royals are on the rise. Royals know who they are because they're winning souls and making disciples. Somebody give God some praise right now. If you're going to win souls, give God some praise right now. If you're going to change who you are to win souls, give God some praise right now. God didn't call us to win arguments. He called us to win souls. Some people say, I need to go to Bible college so I can be educated how to debate. How many people have came to Christ here because of a debate? Zero. There's a place for debate. There's a place for apologetics. But you must understand, the Bible says the power comes to make me a witness, not a lawyer. A witness only says what I saw, what I heard and what happened to me. A lawyer debates through the book. A witness just says this is what happened to me. I was blind, now I see. I was addicted to drugs, but now I'm free. My life was falling apart. I was shooting myself with heroin, but now I am a good man. I am a good husband and I am a good father. Because Jesus Christ, I don't know about that man. See, Muhammad said he's the prophet of truth. Buddha said he's the secret of truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. And that man changed my life. That man saved me that man forgave me that man died for me that man 
I don't know about that man, but he changed my life. You do whatever you want with that man, but I am a different because of that man. We have a church today that is not passionate to win souls. A lot of people I feel like the reason why they're not winning souls is because they want to clean people before they catch people. Nobody goes into the sea to clean the fish until you catch it. People say, Pastor Vlad, what do you do with people if homosexuals come to church? I said, the same thing that you do with people when liars come to church. I don't preach morality. I preach Christ and Him crucified. I don't expect homosexuals to live a straight life. Who cares if they go straight or homosexual? If they're going to go to hell in hell, it won't matter if you were straight or homosexual. And there's a lot of people who will be in hell who are not homosexual, but they were straight. My goal is not to make homosexual men straight. My goal is to make all men to come to know Jesus first, to be won by Christ and then to be disciples of Jesus Christ. That's why I don't clean him until I catch him. I don't disciple corpses. Jesus first raised Lazarus from the dead and then he said remove his grave clothes. You don't go into the grave to remove the grave clothes until you raise him from the dead. And the church has been so obsessed to go change the world. We just want to change the world. Please understand sinners sin. That's who they are. Fish swim, birds fly, sinners sin. That shouldn't shock you. When somebody says I live that kind of life, I'm like good is for you bro. Why? But what do you expect out of them? A young man approached me in the lobby of our church and he says, Pastor Vlad, I'm smoking weed. Is it wrong for me? I said, for you? No. He said, what do you mean? I said, look. And I knew this man. I knew his family. So I had the boldness to say that. I said, you're going to hell. It's obvious. Mama knows that. I know that. God knows that. You know that. And your family knows that. Five people already know you're going to hell. He said, okay. I said, what difference will it make? If you go to hell with holding yourself from smoking or you go to hell smoking it up knowing why you're there for. You're still going to be there. I said if I would be in your shoes bro, I would smoke anything I could get my hands on. Since I'm going there anyway, at least I could enjoy the ride. I said I feel bad for all of you people holding yourself back and still going there realizing man I could have smoked a joint. He looked at me, his eyes were like this. He's like, oh my God. That night he got saved. <laughs> you're not going to heaven because you're not smoking. You're going to heaven because your sins were washed by Jesus. We preach the gospel. We preach Jesus. We preach the cross. We preach the blood-stained Calvary. And that changes people. And only then we disciple people. Only then we bring them and say, listen, I know the school told you you can decide your gender but listen it's very simple you go in the bathroom you remove your pants you look down if it looks like this you're a girl if you look like that you're a boy because that's what the Bible says so now let's renew our mind and if you don't still don't think it's right let me cast that demon of perversion out of you in Jesus mighty name <laughs> or maybe they need inner healing or they need counseling but we don't disciple people who we don't win first to Christ I know my time is out and I'm I'm not sorry. I was about to say I'm sorry, but I was about to lie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna land this plane right now. Are you still with me? Can you handle just a few more minutes? God wants you to win the lost. The Holy Spirit upon us so we can win people to Jesus. Please understand, use your platform. Start inviting people to church. God doesn't just want to fill this place. God wants to empty hell. Please understand our goal is not to impress people on Instagram with how big our churches are. Our goal is to shake the devil, give him a headache and let heaven rejoice because people are snapped from the gates of hell. The Holy Spirit is not given to you to give you a ministry. It's given to you to help you fulfill the calling you already got. You don't need bigger platform if you're not using the platform you got to win others to Jesus. Stop asking God enlarge my enlarge my influence if you never ask God say Lord leverage my influence to bring people to Jesus Christ. God put me on bigger stages. God give me a bigger voice. The voice that you already had God. How many people have come to Royals because of that? How many people today on your prayer list that you are praying for? See God has only one goal. See God doesn't just look at your little tiny little life and what is concerned about your comfort. If that would be the case he would never let disciples be murdered and martyred. He would never let my great grandpa sit in jail for 10 years and after to be released and dragged around with the horse while villagers threw rocks at him and he died three days 
days later from a brain damage. God didn't concern about my comfort. God is concerned about me fulfilling my calling and make sure that no man dies. He let his son die on a cross so that nobody does that. So nobody pays for their sin because the price was already paid. That is God's heartbeat. That is God's obsession. That is why when God looks at me he says I'll raise you up. I'll give you the anointing. I'll give you the miracles. I'll give you whatever you need son but please go let my people be free from Egypt. The calling of God upon your life is God's attempt to answer the cry of your generation. The reason why God calls you to win souls and make disciples it's not to punish you. It's not to cause you to lose your job or lose your influence. It's not to cause you to be a gospel thumper and to be a, a Jesus freak. It's because God hears the cry of your generation and God says the only way I can answer their cry is if you answer the call. The only way. God told Moses I hear the cry. The crazy part is Moses didn't hear that cry. The only thing Moses heard is comfort. I remember and I'm going to finish on this. I remember when I, that became personal to me. I moved into to the new house and my neighbor, a retired gentleman, we, we exchange pleasantries all the time. Hi, bye, how you doing? I live very close to church, about six, five houses away from the church. And I, I was about to invite him to church, but something, something came up. Then I was about to invite him to church, something came up. And I'm like, you know, we're going to have that special service and I'm going to invite him to church. And then I didn't see him for that special service, nowhere in the yard. And I was like, I I'll see him next time and invite him to church. And then something happened. I realized that I haven't seen him for three, four months. FBI went through his house, everything flipped upside down. I was like, oh my God, my neighbor must be a criminal. Praise God I didn't invite him to church. Few months later I googled his name just out of curiosity and then I Google, I saw an obituary from my city turns out that two months ago he died and the reason why FBI went through his house is because he he worked for some government agency and they were just trying to see you know which which secrets or some other stuff that he had they were selling his house and the lady who was selling his house came as I was washing my car and she says I want you to come and see his house and I said why would I want to do that but I'm a pastor, so I can't, I gotta behave. I was like, okay, ma'am, yes, I'll go with you. We'll go see the house. I'm not interested. It's like 30 years old house. My house is, is brand new and I, I don't wanna go see the house, but I'm gonna go because I'm a Christian. I go in and I'm just literally, I'm busy because my car needs to be washed. And as we're going in, right in the middle of the living room, I see a piece of carpet this size, pretty much cut out. And so to strike a conversation with the lady selling the house, and I said, wow, that's weird. That's a cool design that they had a carpet cut out in the middle of the room. And she said, you didn't know how he died, huh? I said, well, he was old. He said, that's not how he died. That's where he shot himself. I said, you mean the happy guy who was always waving to me shot himself? He said, yeah, he had nobody. I went home, I locked myself and I started to cry for this reason. See, when God was calling me to witness to him, I did not know he heard his cry and God dialed the numbers and he saw his son located next door he says I don't need to scream to Vlad I could just whisper to him and he'll tell him about me except when God whispered I thought it wasn't urgent when he whispered I didn't think it was important and I kept postponing it and that day I felt the Holy Spirit put in my heart and he said the reason why I called you it's because there is someone's cry I cannot answer if you don't answer the call. I'm gonna have to see that guy one day. Maybe in eternity on the judgment seat or something. I made a mistake. Right there in my room I bowed my knees and I promised to God every opportunity I get a chance to preach I will give a call to salvation like it would happen today. I will never miss an opportunity in our church Sunday service without giving a call to salvation. And if you prompt me to tell somebody about Christ, I will always remember it's not because you want to embarrass me or me to be rejected. It's because most likely you're hearing their cry and that's why you're calling me.
God is calling you to witness. God is calling you to make disciples. God is calling you not just to be successful but to be fishers of men. Not just because he wants you to be religious and to fill this church for your pastor. It's because there is a cry that is going up to heaven and that cry has filled the voice message of God. There's so much God cannot delete anymore. He dials you and he says listen you got the Holy Ghost. I gave you tongues. I gave you miracles. You're good looking. You got the influence. You got the education. Listen all you gotta do is start a conversation all you gotta do is ask that person how you're doing what are you doing this weekend would you like to come to church with me all you gotta do that listen come on could you do that and many of us we do exactly what I did we don't answer the call and then we say why does God not answer the cry of people because his people don't answer his call the way you treat the call of God is the way God will treat your prayers You don't answer God's call don't be surprised if he doesn't pick up yours the way you treat the call of God is the way God will treat your prayers people who don't answer the call typically have one thing in common they have a bunch of unanswered prayers make the connection God saves you God loves you but he also loves the world and he wants to use you to impact your world he wants you to be a missionary in London you don't have to go to Siberia or Mexico or Africa to be a missionary you just have to go into your world with a new mindset I walk into the Holy with the Holy Spirit I don't come to church I come to church to be fueled up for my destination which is my world and my platform we're gonna pray right now for an impartation of the love of God for the burden if you feel God is shifting something in your heart you realize maybe today man I I don't know the Holy Spirit as, as Vlad was talking about I realized that today I've abandoned my calling of winning the lost I honestly I don't remember last time I even told somebody about Christ for the life of me I don't remember anybody that came to church because of me I don't support missionaries I don't support anything that has to do with the gospel the only thing I'm interested in is just getting successful and getting ahead in life and there's nothing wrong with that please understand if hell wouldn't be real nothing wrong with that if Jesus wouldn't die on the cross